a principle that existed in law enforcement for quite some time. It, it sort of evolved when when uh, the media turned it into something negative. But there's a lot of solid information uh, in this theory. And, and the theory is is that when you have a broken window, uh, you have a broken window in, in say in an abandoned building or a factory, and you don't fix that window. What you're doing is encouraging you're encouraging more decay. Uh, and it's a simple principle. It, it, it's much deeper than that in the law enforcement realm. But really, what it says is, is when you when, when you when you have a healthy environment, that healthy environment encourages you know healthy results. When you have decay, then decay uh, has a, a tendency to to grow. Uh, so that the, the broken windows theory is something that that has guided law enforcement for years uh, back when this principle saying you know first came about uh, it had to do with the uh, having an abandoned car. Uh, leaving an abandoned car and putting it somewhere and then taking and doing damage to that car and then seeing what happened it just encouraged more damage. And so this whole theory builds from there. And so law enforcement, we always look at uh, in our communities, let's, let's, let's find those things that are broken. Let's address them. Let's have meaningful discussion on how collectively we're all part of the discussion because we all want the same thing and, and follow that forward. Well, three years ago, I wrote an article about broken windows and I, made the comparison that when you look at the modern day broken windows, it is the failure of our system. It is district attorneys, it is prosecutors, it's rogue, it's judges that are are minimizing the the uh, act the, the actions that are taken, the criminalization of of crimes, uh, you know, and decriminalizing crimes that is creating the new decay in American society. And yet here we are. Here we are, years later, looking at the same exact thing, and we've been signaling this concern for quite some time, and it seems to have really grown uh, in, in a completely different direction. And I know you, I see you, you know, you're, you're, I see you want to respond to that. So, uh, you know, broken windows is a great theory. Um, it it uh, it it kind of gotten some uh, you know some negative publicity at, at some point when the media turned it into something else, but it but it works, it works. Yeah, no, I mean, you're absolutely right. Broken windows works. I mean, the American police officer delivered historic crime reductions to our urban communities in the 20 years prior to this huge crime spike. I mean, it really, it truly led to an urban renaissance because we were willing to prosecute crimes, okay? We were willing to enforce the laws we had on the books and criminals understood that if they stepped out of line, there was gonna be consequences for those actions. There's no consequences anymore. And we have now an entire generation of people from ages, you know, 15, 18, who have now come up in the next three years and they're coming into their prime crime doing years who realize that nothing they do is going to be prosecuted to the fullest extent of the law. They're probably going to get a PR bond. They're probably going to be right back out. They're going to get a sweetheart deal from the prosecutor. So they only escalate their violence and we're seeing it across the board. Last year, we had 16 American cities experience their highest murder rates on record. Places like Philly, Portland, Austin, Indianapolis, the list goes on and on. I think what is so frustrating for, for us in law enforcement is that we know how to fix what we're seeing in our urban communities. And, and it's what you talked about. We bring back broken we are, windows theory. We vehemently prosecute violent crime. We make sure we fund and staff our police departments because police officers are just one component of the criminal justice system. We can lock people up all day and we can do overtime programs to flood the streets with officers. And, th and those are good things. Uh, New York is doing that right now in their subway system and they're bringing back uh, their broken windows theory policing. But if the back end, the DAs and the judges aren't doing their job, we're just going to continue to catch people and they're going to be letting out right out the back door while we're still doing the paperwork. I mean, I still work the streets right now. I work night shift and we catch people that are doing robberies and burglaries and everything else. They're laughing at us in the back seat because they know they're going to go right down and get out. They're going to be out before the ink's dry on the paperwork. But, you know, I think what's lost in all of this is just the damage this is doing to our urban communities. We're losing them for a generation. Look at what's happening. Stores are closing. We got Walgreens closing dozens of stores. Rite Aid is closing dozens of stores. Grocery stores are not opening in those areas because they know it's not safe. So that creates a food desert where people have to travel miles just to go to the grocery store. Banks will not open new locations and are closing old locations in those areas. So it creates a financial desert where if you want to do any kind of banking, once again, you have to travel miles just to do it. Parents 
don't feel safe taking their kids to school and they can't find teachers to fill the positions in these urban communities. So shame on anyone who continues to push defund the police or, or pushing for this, you know, holistic approach to criminal justice because these politicians and these academics, they pushed these woke revolving door criminal justice policies on the community and they promised them, don't worry folks, this is gonna make your community safer. It was a lie. They had no statistical data to back up anything. They had no scientific studies to back it up. They subjected our urban communities to a failed social experiment. And now we are all living in the aftermath. They should be ashamed of themselves, but they should at least have the decency to back off it now and support police officers so that we can go in and fix what they broke. Yeah, Joe, it's, it's, it's no, anybody in law enforcement has been here for, for a while knows uh, one thing for certain. That is that uh, the majority of the violent crime that we see in this country is committed by a very small percentage of people who commit violent crime. Exactly right. And, and the, when we take those violent criminals off the street, we have control. Uh, we do control the, the increase of crime or we decrease crime. It, it has to do, it's directly proportionate to taking these people who prey on others uh, out of the, out of the, the, the ability to be able to do so. And, mm -hmm. and, and we're failing to do it. We're failing to do it now. And we're seeing that, uh, that an increase in crime and you are so correct. The crime is occurring in the very communities that, uh, that we claim that we're trying to help. Uh, and so there's, there's definitely a, there needs to be a, 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 cha a course change here. Um, I think we, we all agree that, uh, there are a lot of issues that we need to discuss as a society, uh, to fix. Uh, but th the problem is, is that it is too easy to blame law enforcement for everything that ails every community. Uh, reality is, is most of the things that that contribute to the quality of life within a community are way beyond the hands of law enforcement. And until we do look at all of these aspects, this is this is a wheel with a whole lot of spokes. And when everyone is doing their job and doing exactly what they need to do to improve the quality of life within a community, we see it across America. We see communities that are thriving. They're the same size of some of the communities that are not. It's because we have broken spokes on the wheel. And in the day that we start focusing on having everyone moving towards one direction, and that is safe and thriving communities, until we get to, to get to that point, we're going, to, we're going to see this broken this broken system in cities that are just not connected uh, in, in addressing all of the key factors that contribute to our quality of life. Yeah, and you know, I think the public is really taking notice. A recent Gallup poll said eight out of 10 Americans believe that crime is a serious problem in this country. And another recent poll just said that 76% of black Americans want more police officers in the neighborhood, not less. And 74% of Hispanic Americans want more police officers in the neighborhood, not less. So it kind of flies in the face of the narrative that somehow police officers in the community are at each other's throats. It's just not the case. It's not the reality on the ground. Like when I'm out there patrolling, People want me in their neighborhood because they know instinctively that police officers equal safety, no matter how much the media or some politicians try to convince them otherwise. I just can't understand how anybody could not be for throwing the book at someone who shoots someone. Like, this is not a partisan issue. You know what I mean? It, it, this is just public safety. Everybody should want to support making communities safe because they deserve, urban communities deserve to thrive like everyone else. They deserve to be able to take their kids to school in a safe environment. They deserve to have the best funded schools and to be able to, to, to prosper. And I, I just can't understand how anyone could be on the other side of that argument, wanting to be light on criminals while we're seeing the, our community suffer further and further. And, and I will say this, regardless of whether you're on the right or the left, anybody who is not a law and order candidate is coming for a reckoning because the public is tired of this crap. They're tired of seeing repeat felons out there murdering people. They're tired of seeing crime and disorder in their neighborhood. They're tired of seeing the headlines of, you know, dozens of people shot over Easter weekend. And, uh, you know, if you're a politician who's still pushing defund the police, you better wake up quick or your ass is going to be out of a job.